sorry, we're just about to get underway here at the city ground. It is Watford who kick us off. They're playing from right to left in those uh, yellow shirts and black shorts. Simon Hooper from Wiltshire gets us underway with a blast of his whistle. And the ball is sent long down the right-hand side by Watford and brought down halfway inside the forest half. But Yara gets the foot in and then Patterson goes on a mazy run. He started on the left-hand side of uh, Forest midfield with uh, Abdoon on the right-hand side. We hit quickly and the ball runs out of place with another forest throw, which is uh, about halfway inside their own half of the team. Yeah, I mean, I think it'll suit Abdoon on, on the right-hand side with him being right-footed, Colin. There's a, a lot of people say, well, it's better if you've got a, a right foot on the left side because it can jink inside, but, you know, the, you gain far more an advantage if somebody goes on the outside rather than the inside, and let's just hope that Patterson and Abdoon get a lot of the ball tonight because they've got to be the creative influences on a night like this. Well, it's out of play on the far side now. That's Watford's right. They're attacking from right to left as we look at it. At the back of the main stand here at the City Ground. So they're playing towards the Trent end with about uh, three or four hundred or so of their own supporters at their backs. Way to our right. And the Forest will be playing towards the Trent end second half the way they like to do so. Watford have it just inside their own penalty area. Alfred putting Angela under a little bit of pressure. But before it's cleared into the middle of their own half, the Tokyo uh, swaps some short passes, gets the ball back, sends it forward looking for Troy Deeby, cut out though by Lascelles. Like I said, there's been some big wave reviews and plenty of attention for Premier League clubs as the season's worn on. Lehigh with a long ball forward down the right flank, it just drifts out of play with our Doon looking for it, and that'll be a throw to Watford, which Doon is going to take from the Czech Republic, it's trying to go back a few yards by the uh, shaven head figure of Simon Hooper, the referee. And in no hurry to take the throw. The foot that he's played, no nil, at the city ground, lots of rain over the uh, last few hours, but the pitch looking in very, very good condition. And uh, as Watford loses it down, Harding is going to go back to his goalkeeper, Carl Darlow, who controls it just outside his penalty area and then plays it short to Danny Collins. And then from centre half, switching it out to a fellow central defender, Carl Lascelles, and he's going to give it back to Collins. It's a technical screen from both sides in the early stages. Now it's forward towards Gonzalo Yara. Good ball from him, left hand side. Picks out Harding on the overlapping run. Midway inside the Watford half, he stops and lays it off for Patterson and Forrest to force back to halfway. Here's Yara now looking to spread it out towards the right hand side. Lehigh brings it down on his chest, turns it back to Lascelles, and Lascelles now plays it into the feet of Yara once more inside the centre circle, forward to Reed. Reed knocks it on towards Patterson, and he's given it left side to Harding again. Decent football by Forrest. Harding with the cross, and bullied away by Angela with Almunia now screaming at him because he was just behind him, the goalkeeper, and presumably gave him a shout which Angela completely ignored, but he got away with the clearance. He followed it clear anyway. But, uh, Almunia was none too impressed with the centre half, who has it now and plays a good ball forward down the left hand side. But Pudil, Pudil plays it into the feet of Deeney. He lays it off first time, gets it back inside the deep, curls one just over the crossbar. Inches over the bar, holds his head in his hands. Neat link up play with the Kitchianya. After Pudil was first involved down the left hand side, the CD in the end was not very far away, it almost shaved the crossbar as it went over. It's a goal kick, it remains 0 0, four minutes play. Yeah, that was a great chance and uh, had too much time. There was a little bit of a discussion between Yara and uh, someone else in midfield, but because obviously to let a Watford player just get that ball, control it, turn, line it up, shoot nearly proved uh, to be fatal for Forrest, but uh, thankfully not, as that one was just a yard over the top. The cover by Eric Lehigh from a long ball forward from Watford, looking for Anya, running through from midfield, but Lehigh was back to cover the danger. And now Lucy lays it off to Lascelles. They give his own penalty area, but coming forward. And, uh, the first one's in to Troy Deeney. There's help from Lucy. Lucy finds Lehigh. Watford pressing Forrest. Now, quite deep in their own half, so Forrest are having to uh, play their way out of trouble a little bit. Here's Yara laying it off for Lucy, still inside their own half, with five minutes played at the city ground and no score. 
and Estelle's green boots and all, sends it forward to Yara, just inside the rock and half, keeps moving it to the left hand side, this is Harding again well forward from fullback, Dan Harding taking on his man, sending in a low cross, an extra handed is, is, is at his near post to be able to get the ball clear, and a great header, run by uh, Gonzalo Yara, just a Watford player on the floor, I think it's only going to be a throw rather than a free kick, on the far side, but we're inside Watford's half their right for Rowley to take. Yeah, five minutes gone, but already Harding's managed to get almost clear twice on the left hand side, the right hand side of the Watford defence, and uh, that's an outlet. Um, that's a, a really good sign for Forrest if they can get him forward on as many occasions. And Jella plays one forward inside left channel for Watford, cut out by Lehigh, and he finds Jamal Abdu, the Algerian on halfway, plays it off for Moosey. Back to Lehigh and Forrest again playing it around in the middle of their own half and this is Collins who looks left hand side for Dan Harding. Tucks it in field for Yara. The short on and gloves. It's a, a chilly night. Quite as cold as I thought it was going to be. It's going to be the coldest night of the year tonight but uh, more of the winter. So it's still quite that cold. Here's Harding again getting well forward. Down, uh, down Forrest left hand side. He's held up temporarily by Ferrell. He, he's held on to the ball and tucked it backwards for Yara. Now Abdoon helps it on to Patterson. 25 yards out. Plays it left hand side. Edge of the penalty area. Reed is challenged. And not been able to get the ball clear. It remains 0 0. Six minutes play. Challenge coming in from Reed on Ferrell on the far side. And the referee I think has given a throw. That really closed Andy Reid down very, very quickly when he got the ball on the edge of the Watford penalty area. So Andy would have been in an ideal position, but real fast thinking by Forestieri there. Here's next round for Watford. Looking into the midfield and getting it back. And now sending it to this near side, Watford's left. And this is Angela. And you can't get it under control. And Forrest with it in the midfield. Yara tucks it backwards for uh, Harding once more. And Harding gives it all the way back to Carl Barlow, all in line green. And it was Clapson that won the initial ball, Colin, and he's had a wander in from the left hand side, uh, but managed to win that ball. And Andy Reid's gone and taken his position in a wide spot, and uh, Yara switches this one to Lee Kai at right back. Well forward, halfway side the Watford half, half but quickly closed down. And Daniel Pudel. That'll be a throw to Forrest, which Lehigh is going to take. Throws it uh, to the middle of the Watford half for Yara. Forrest again, knocking the ball around around halfway. Again, the outlet is Harding down the left hand side. This time finds Reed left wing, but back to goal. Turns it infield, 10 yards inside the Watford half for Moosey. Back out wide left for Harding. Now Reed has it once more. Forrest crossing possession, but it's one could have come closest so far. No goals. Long ball forward from Yara. Headed on by Abdoon looking for Halford, but cleared away by Angela. And then for Rowley. Clears, but again only as far as Harding. Gives it to Reed. Bit of space to cross for Andy Reed. And uh, Doyley gets up and just flips the header away. But it'll come out on this near side for his right. This is Patterson giving it to Lehigh on the overlap. Lehigh crosses close down by Pudil across the floor. Corner, first of the match. Comes to Forrest, eight and a half, and it's in. Yeah, the layoff by Patterson. The lead guy coming up outside him. The right hand side of the Watford fence area. Yeah, just a yard too short, but he still managed to win a corner. Andy Reid, as usual, will take this from the right hand side, left footed in swinger. It's now getting short along the byline. This is Patterson giving it back to Reid, and then puts it in first side, but it's too close to goalkeeper Manuel Almunia, who was probably trying to catch the goalkeeper out, but in the end it was. I think it apples kind of catch for Almunia. Long ball forward here with a good ball forward to the feet of Ikechianya for Watford. Midway inside the Forest half. He's holding on to it. Now he's having a run up and tries to thread one through for Forest here. He cut out by Lascelles. And Lascelles gives it to Abdu. Left hand side of the field at the moment, Abdu. Forward towards Halford. 15 yards inside the Watford half but too many yellow shirts around him. And Watford have it back again. Far side of the field. But Patterson intercepts Anya's little layoff. And Forrest have it once more, halfway inside their own half. Nil nil, nearly 10 minutes played at the City Ground. Unusual night for football on this Thursday evening. It's uh, Forrest's next game. It's been uh, knocked back 
towards uh, Sunday. So we're back here at the city ground with you on Sunday afternoon for half past two for Forest against Gilsall Town. Forest have it on halfway. You can see Patterson switching it out towards Nick near side to right. And there is Lehigh. Lehigh forward into the seat of uh, Halford, who's back to goal and first yard now and brought down by Joel Ekstrad. The sweep will plainly play the ball, which he might have done, but played the man as well. It helped him play it that well because his first touch of the ball ran away from him by a couple of yards, but he immediately put his body in between the ball and the Watford player and Ekstrad then obviously did lunge forward, but he's connected with Halford and then connected with the ball and it's a good decision by the referee and well played Halford to win this free kick. Reid is going to take it, 30 yards out, maybe even a bit more than that, and to the right of centre, but perfect for the left footed Andy Reid to be able to deliver a dangerous ball into the box. In it goes now towards the back post. Okay, two seconds in against the crossbar. The diving header was from Danny Collins, and Forrest still have it with Abdul trying a very towards goal, but over the crossbar and away for a goal kick. with a diving header which rattled the Watford bar and he came back out to the edge of the penalty area and Moosey again involved as he helps it to a two the volley well wide of the target and it remains nil nil but Collins close but what would have been a beauty yeah and again Andy Reid the instigator with a great flighted left foot free kick from outside the penalty area and Moosey going up really well at the far post and heading it powerfully across goal Collins made good contact but he was under pressure and couldn't guide it lower than the crossbar, but there's a quick free kick that Collins again with a great intercept at the other end this time, but the ball was threaded through inside right channel towards your catchy Anya for Watford, in slid Danny Collins on the edge of the Forest penalty area, and after Forest had had the first corner, now Watford get their first corner of the game. 12 minutes in, nil-nil, keeping an eye on the uh, ice hockey tonight as well, with the Panthers in action in South Wales, they lead the Cardiff Devils to the Nottingham Panthers by a goal to nil in ice hockey's elite league, Joe Grimaldi on target. Corner there to Watford, from the far side there right, out swinging corner, and Cheddar with the volley, goes way over the crossbar. Well, it was a little bit too easy from Forest's point of view defensively for Angela to get the effort towards goal. It wasn't on target. And uh, when you call it a free header, it was pretty much a free volley. He side-footed it and well over the crossbar. But that was actually a decent opportunity. Yeah, the ball came into the near post and Angela did what all good strikers do. He actually ran towards the ball and as it dropped short on the edge of the six-yard box, he volleyed it with his right foot and... It's just gone wide of the target and for the centre half, that was a decent effort. But uh, it's amazing, Colin, if you talk about the delivery of Andy Reid, it's a good delivery, there's a chance. And again there, you could, you've got somebody thinking to get in front of the defender and run towards the ball. And he's at half a chance, so... A chance of one end, but that one wasn't quite as easy for Angela. Lee High on halfway for Forrest, goes backwards to Lascelles because he was again being hunted down by Watford who were getting through a lot of work off the ball. As Forrest have it again now with Danny Collins 10 yards inside his own half. Switches it out to Lascelles who volleys it forward into midfield for Lucy. He has to lay it off quickly because he was under pressure. And now Lee High sends it forward and oh, the uh, other flag got up for offside but actually it's a foul on Jamal Abdu. Yeah, assistant referee saw his shirt being tugged. And so Forrest did another free kick. So we're now halfway inside the Watford half, wide on this near side, Forrest right hand side. So chance for Reid to get another decent ball into the box. Lucy and Collins and Lascelles all go forward up towards the edge of the penalty area once more. 14 minutes played here at the city ground. Nil nil between Forrest and Watford. And Reid delivers the ball in. Back post again. And again Watford struggle, but it's getting clear of the second attempt after Forrest won the first header. Crowded bodies, but uh, almost too many because it kind of got stuck in the middle of the ball. Morris still have it. Patterson down the right hand side. Leaves it for Reed now. Still 30, 35 yards out, right flank. Lucy stabs it even further wide for Abdu. Gives it back to Reed. Abdu makes the run off the ball, but he's running into a bit of a blind alley. Reed holds on to it. He's challenged, then off that challenge. The ball spins away towards the byline for a corner. Abdu makes it run. 
Uh, good perseverance there by Andrew Reid. He's going to get a quick tree kick. Sorry, quick corner. Jamal, Jamal to Reid. Here is Reid. Into the edge of the penalty area from Patterson. And off that challenge, it almost breaks from Lucy. He hits a shot. That is blocked. Forrest still have it as it comes down. That will be a misty sky. Harding, left-hand side. Midway inside the Watford half. Good pressure here from Forrest. Harding's cross. Back post. And two volleys. And it's a cannon in for the ground. And looks up into the air. And it's a fairly easy catch in the end for Almunia. Physical attempt. Uh, I'm doing was trying. Here's Forrest Vieri just inside the Forest half now for Watford. He's the game, no no. In the first quarter of an hour. Back with these two men at Vickery's Road earlier in the season. On the level that day as well. Going forward for Watford. Looking for a catchy and you've been taken off him very easily by Danny Collins. And now here's Harding sending a long ball forward. Extra gets across first ahead of Halford. Looks it into touch Forrest with the throw 10 yards inside Watford's half. And reading that one very, very well, getting the miles ahead of Craig Halford, and there's a, a loose ball by Yara, out by Pudel, who went inside his own half. And now it's for Tokyo for Watford, crossing into Forest territory to the left of the centre circle, leaving it now for Dini, who dropped deep. Dini forward towards Forest Vieri, kind of shoulders it down, and it's still in Watford's possession. Pudel keeps it in play down this near side to left. Here's for Tokyo again. Pudel still in close support, two Forest players trying to close down. The uh, Argentinian for Tokyo, and it goes out off his cross for a Watford corner. There's a second now. And this time, Abdul managed to get back to help out. Just in case the guy was outnumbered, but uh, he managed to block the effort. Abdul, and then goes up another centre forward position. And yet to take for Watford from the left hand side. Right footed, in swinging corner, diving header, not much on it for the next plan. He's getting up with a peeling that he was uh, pushed, but his pardon, it's uh, Angela up from the back. And it went well, well wide because he just glanced off his forehead. And he was claiming that the reason he was uh, it was a diving header is because he was shot. But I think Ray Simon Hooper disagrees. I think Torres' top striker out there was the one that just gave him a nudge. That would be great, Alfred. That's him. Just a little nudge as he was going to dive the head that one, but it was enough just to put him off. Shoulder to shoulder, I believe that one's still within the rules. That gets Halford. Aerial challenge here with Sean Murray, but the ball goes out of play off the Forest Man, and Watford get a throw a couple of yards inside their own half. 17 gone, nil nil to score here at the City Ground on BBC Radio Nottingham's match night, also tonight on BBC Radio 5 Live Sports Extra. Here is Lascelles, it will inside his own half, slightly heavy touch, put under pressure by Forrest Vieri, but gives it to Lehigh, flips it forward right side, extra and heads it away towards halfway. Lucy loses out to Pudil, now for Tokyo, sends it forward first time, looking for Dini's run, cut out by Lascelles, and Lucy switches it across his own half to the far side, Forrest left, or Reed tucks it backwards now for Harding, Harding being peeled towards Yara. Darlow finds Collins, and Collins goes back to Darlow, it was a bit wide of Darlow, and on target, Darlow had to hurry slightly to make sure that was going to be a horrendous old goal, but Watford have it again now, here's Deeney, 25 yards out, rocking it left-hand side, and Doris Vieri, left corner of the penalty area, now Anya gives it to Puda, wide left, Puda with a high cross towards the back post, which is headed away by Reed, not very far, uh, left foot, half volley, is well wide of the target from Sean Murray from the edge of the penalty area, looking outside the penalty area, and it's a goal kick, the main field nil. Friendly by Andy Reid at the far post, beating his man in the air, managing to hit the ball clear. It's not where he really wants to be, he wants to be at the other end creating and scoring, but Sean, he's got the responsibility, he's been pushed wide on the left hand side, a little bit of a strange move, but doing a great job there as a midfield player helping out his defence. No goals between Forrest and Watford here at the City Ground. Watford have it again on halfway, stands forward, Forrest Vieri, who has been offside, but the Argentinian uh, striker decided not to take the ball, so the flag stayed down. And the ball went all the way through to Dolo, who's given it to Collins, who helps it forward now for Reed to flick on, looking for Halford, cleared away by Doyley for Watford, who picks it up again in midfield. And this is Murray. Crossing into Forest territory, now laying it off short for Forest Vieri, who holds off the challenge of Lehigh, but he's back to goal at the moment, being forced away back to halfway. Gives then a ball to Lloyd Doyley. Doyley, 
still 100 points for the clearance to his head. They get off the top strand and now Watford work their way back into Forest Half, keeping good possession. But now giving it away through the Tokyo, giving it away to Lucy. Uh, he plays it forward towards Patterson, who looks as if he might be crowded out, but the ball has found its way back to Patterson. And Angela steps across it, Patterson goes down, referee waves play on, he was right on the spot with Simon Hooper of Watford Blake across halfway. Anya lays it off for Forrest Vieri, 10 yards inside the Forest half. Now Deeney tries to touch it off for Anya again, but uh, then uh, as Forrest intercepts it, Deeney brings down Patterson, and Forrest do get a free kick this time midway inside the road half. Yeah, great feet there by Patterson, the ball came to have killed it, stone dead, turned it away from the Watford player, and he ended up getting pulled back, so... The height down the right hand side into the feet of Halford, well forward towards the edge of the Watford penalty area. Now Abdu gives it back to Halford on the edge of the box, but as he's turning, he loses control of it. And Doyley is able to chip it clear, but that's easy beat for Danny Collins just inside the Watford half to win it again. Popped on by Patterson in the air, cleared away on the volley by Exclan, and then Collins wins it again inside the centre circle. And now Lascelles plays it forward towards Halford's feet, and in a strong shoulder to shoulder, Halford is beaten by Exclan, and the ball works all the way through to the all in sky blue Manuel Albuni. Yeah, the ball was a difficult one into Halford, and Exclan read the delivery so. Made it even more difficult, that's why the ball was lost, but there's the ball now. There's Yellow, Deeney, just inside the forest half, holding off a couple of challenges, and now Anya lays it off for Murray. Left of centre, midway inside forest territory, forward towards forest Thierry, finds its way back uh, through Murray, who now finds Anya down the left hand side, crosses, headed away by Dan Harding back post. Breaks for Murray again, Murray's missed his control, but it's a second chance, and now finds Pudil. 20 yards out, Daniel Pudil down the left hand side, but beaten out of it by Abdu, who gives it to Lascelles, which a big right goes through it and clears. Lucy heads it on for Wolves halfway, extra and is covering behind Halford by three or four yards, and as it goes beyond Halford, the uh, Swedish centre half has plenty of time to control and switch passes with Angela and gives it back to him once again. Angela up towards halfway. Gets out of his own half, then plays it forward inside left channel. Deeney's made a good run and good control, and then he's challenged by Collins. Uh, both of them are claiming that he should have been their ball. It's actually given Watford's way. It's going to be a corner. For the third of the game as we approach the halfway mark in the first half. Uh, Max Wilbraer has equalised for Cardiff Devils in the Ice Hockey's Elite League. It's 1 1 against the Nottingham Panthers in South Wales. Halfway through the first half, then here at the City Ground, 0 0. And Watford with a corner. Anya to take, right footed, and almost a free header, it was a free header, but Angela completely missed it, and Forrest were able to clear. Another good chance for Angela, that's twice, once on the volley, and this time with his head, but he made no contact. Raking ball wide left again, Anya nods it infield. This is Troy Deeney, edge of the penalty area, a wide left. Throwing it infield to Forestieri. Forestieri stopped by Moosey. And then takes on Moosey into the penalty area. Low ball in near post and beaten away as uh, Anya was, uh, Forestieri was arriving. He's claiming a corner kick this time and the referee disagrees and says no, it'll be a goal kick. The cells was the closest to it, good enough to put him off. It was well, well wide of the target in the end of finishing effort. But it was neat play again by Watford in and around the Forest penalty area. I think the best chance though came from the corner and Angela failed to get his head on it, John McGovern. Yeah, he's just failed there, but after that there was some great feet by Forestieri uh, to create a, a chance as he hit the cross low into the Forest Six Yard box and again just Forest back in numbers managed to clear that one, but he's got neat control for us here and he's got good feet similar to Batson. And there's a great layoff by Halford there. Half uh, inside Watford's half. This is Moosey now running forward from the middle of midfield, swapping passes with Halford, good one too, now plays it wide left, this is Jamal Abdu, Abdu up to the edge of the penalty area, and rolls it back in field to Yara, Yara, the ball across the penalty area, he's beaten away by Watford, Yara intercepts again, back towards halfway, Watford trying not to break, and Rafael sends it back to Darlow, and Darlow very comfortably deals with what could have been a difficult ball, gives it to Yara, long ball forward for him, Reed chasing after it down the left hand side, that's going to turn into a very good ball, because Reed is scampered after it, gets it in play, level with the edge of the box, he now finds Abdu, gives it back to Reed. room to cross for the Irishman, blocked, and Forrest now in another corner. 
there, a bit of quite accuracy from Yara, although Reed was a little bit marooned on his own up there in the corner flag. Eventually help arrive. The ball was played back and then returned to Reed, who set up to cross in the slot for the corner. So we're waiting for the ball to come back from a, a rather unoccupied area of the city ground tonight in the visitor section. Go to our right hand side. And uh, Reed waits to take the corner. He's just drawing the referee's attention to the fact that the defenders might not be back 10 yards as Reed wants to take a short one to Abdu. Here is the short one, Abdu, then low in towards the near post. And the flag has gone up for offside. And Abdu, when he sent the low ball in, was probably only five yards from the byline. But the assistance flag went up very quickly. He was very sharp to see that Patterson was in an offside position. Yeah, it was a little bit of luck in that, but definitely offside. Yeah, and the forest, not the forest, yeah, the, the two Watford players actually moved off the post, so if they'd left one on the post, then Patterson would have remained onside, but uh, quick thinking there by the Watford defence to literally catch Patterson offside. The forest have a throw, 10 yards inside their own half of the field. But this is what's played. On still told us. Another uh, soggy and misty city ground tonight. Thrown forward by Lee Height, headed on by Halford. And Edgebrand is there to clear for Watford from deep inside his own half, almost next to his own byline. Now Angela with a long ball forward aimed towards Deeney. That's right, that's going to go beyond Deeney and Collins. Uh, to be collected. Just outside his own penalty area by Jamal Lassell. Throws it into the penalty area for Carl Gall. A little bit change in formation. Patterson's come out to the right. Abdoon's gone to the left. Leeds actually moved into a more central midfield position, so the score's still nil-nil, but the forest manager keeps changing them around. Just to see if we can find an opening by switching personnel and having one of them end up in a position where it's a surprise packet for the opposition. Best effort so far. Stephen Collins diving header against the crossbar for Forrest after 11 minutes. Before that, Troy Deeney's curler from the deep, which went just over the bar into four minutes for Watford. No goals so far. Forrest looking to keep up pressure on those above them in the championship after having to wait an extra 48 hours for their game with most of their rivals in action on Tuesday night. Here's Lehigh, well forward down the right hand side, rolling it in towards the season. Reed, but not accurate enough, cleared by Angela up to halfway. Forrest have it back again. It's a bit deeper now. The ball is clipped forward by Yara, but that's going to run away for a goal kick. Uh, Yara playing central midfield tonight. I think he's trying to run the show, Colin. He's, he's asking for the ball as many times as he can get it, and that's a good sign because he's hungry for the ball. Uh, but he's just got to remember that on nights like this, if you chip the ball over the top for somebody to run onto, it's going to zip away rather quickly on the wet surface. So the better option would be in defeat, but he's, he's hit a couple of really good searching balls, especially that one a few minutes earlier to Andy Reid. Cleared from right to left by Manuel Almunia. Forrest picking up inside their own half, and Dan Harding turns it back to the other goalkeeper, his own Carl Dollar. 17 to go until half time. Uh, awful conditions where the cup tie in here against Preston last Friday. It's nowhere near as bad as that. Still wet, miserable and cold. But uh, Mitch is being affected like it was the other night. A bit easier to get the ball under control. So in here for Joe Rexplant as he went up for a header, went right over the top of Greg Halford. He's the man who's been penalised and he's got up and he's okay. That's a bit harsh. Halford's just made a back for him. He's got up forward over Halford rather awkwardly and <laughs> he's given Halford a free kick. Which Reed is going to take. 15 yards inside the Watford half and left of centre. Reed high towards the back post. Albunia comes and doesn't get there. He's actually laid out Greg Halford, I think. The ball has been headed well over the crossbar by Halford, who gets up none the worse. And in any case, none of it would have mattered because the flag is up for us or offside. Yeah, again, a well flighted ball by Andy Reed and Albunia showing bravery and Halford showing bravery. Um, Point in the, the Watford manager and they could see that there after that for the kick had a bit of it nip. Um, and I don't think they did anything wrong in going up to challenge for the ball with Alfred. Pepe Sanino is where he has been for much of the game so far and then he stood 
his uh, hand in his pocket for a long coat on on the edge of the technical area, as close to the pitch as he can get. Here's Reid though, coming forward through the middle of the Watford half, laying it off right hand side. This is Jamie Patterson towards the edge of the penalty area now, twisting and turning and seizing and left for a close shot. He's well dealt with, going down low to his right by Albania. Bit too close to the Watford goalkeeper from Jamie Patterson, who oh, is has been in a real rich vein of form of late and wants to take people on whenever he gets the ball like nothing more than to run at people and get the shot away at the end of it as well scored plenty of goals of late as Jamie Patterson five of them and uh, this time he was a bit too close to the goalkeeper to add to that he was with another good challenge on Forrest the area Forrest comes forward again Halford lays it off for Reid Reid clicks it right hand side Patterson cushions a volley down to Halford Lehigh on the overlapping run but it's Patterson who gets it right hand side Lehigh outside and he cuts inside though and finds a great ball to Reid 25 yards out plays it left hand side onside is Abdul into the penalty area gives it back to Reid first time but right underneath it and skies it way over the bar and it will remain nil-nil it's a goal kick there are 14 minutes to go until half time but just signs John McGovern that Forrest are getting into their stride yeah they are they're beginning to find one or two important things in the Rockford defence the skill by Patterson was immaculate because just minutes before that attempt by Andy Reid he'd received the ball from Andy Reid and he's beaten two Rockford players in the space of about five yards Jake pass one throwing the shoulder down for the other one to take the dummy cut inside on his left foot and hit a really good shot with his left foot considering there was very little backswing and it's taken Armouni a good save to go down to his right to save it so Patterson shot excellent skill there Fred Watson on halfway just a couple of yards in fact inside Forest half far side of the field Watford's right coming down the line by Ferrowney but Forest deal with it Lucy, oh that's a loose pass from Lucy given away on the edge of the D and uh, the shot coming in from Ferrowney is deflected and goes behind for a corner kick awful ball from G. Lucy Ferrowney seized on it got to the edge of the D and then was uh, somewhat surrounded it seemed a bit hesitant before shooting and uh, in the end he's on his side a corner kick could have been worse for Forrest 32 play, 0-0 Anya with the corner towards the near post. Flick on, he's going to go in. It's a flick, almost with a back heel. And it's the man who's come close two or three times from set pieces who finally breaks the deadlock. It's Gabriel Angela, the big centre half, who almost with a back heel fully at the near post deflected almost the corner in from Ikechi Anya. It went high and it was almost cleared off the line. Right, and it was Derek Lehigh, the Forest defender on the line. But he headed it up onto the bar and it went into the net. And Watford have the lead after 33 first half minutes. And Chella has had two or three decent chances from set pieces. And now it's he who breaks the deadlock. It is 1 0 to Watford. Yeah, and again, the instinct to run towards the ball as the cross came in. And Chella got there first and his flick was enough. It just flew past. Um, Carl Darlow, he couldn't do anything about it, and I think I think it was uh, it might have even been Lascelles tried to get to it, but couldn't do it. So first goal to Watford, and really against the run of play. Forrest come forward looking for an immediate response, volleyed away there on the edge of the penalty area by Pudil for Watford, and into the Forest car. Well, they've looked dangerous from their set pieces. And that man in particular has looked dangerous. He's already volleyed one from the near post. Uh, then had a header which he made no contact on but this time he got decent contact on, on nothing more than a flick really the same flicks never worked but that one did whether it was uh, by luck or judgment Watford won't care because they lead Deeney wins a good challenge against Moosey in midfield and Watford have plenty of space here down the right hand side this is Forestieri they've got men arriving in the box as well Forestieri runs into the penalty area he's now on the edge of the box and turns and hits the side footer which is deflected and Forest are able to get it clear through Lehigh finding Reed. Reed is half caught in possession but still manages to loop the ball up towards Abdoon and Forest have it inside their own half of the field you can't help but think that maybe Watford ought to have done better with that opportunity because they had players arriving in the penalty area and Halford hits it on way over the head of Patterson and out for a Watford throw. Forrest have just 
they almost lost their way for a moment after that Watford open. Well, they were caught flat there uh, because Harding was trying to run back through the middle of the field and he, should, he really should have been attacking the danger on the far side, but when, when Forrest Jerry cut in, we said he had good feet earlier on, Colin, and he, he turned one way, then the other, and eventually his right foot shot was blocked to relieve the danger, but... Uh, he had two arriving into the box on Mark. He did, but I think I think the way he's played, where he's, he's got the ball and he's dribbled past people, he thinks I should be the one that should be hitting the shot at goal, but uh, he made a right mess of that, actually. Here's Reeve, sending it wide left for Forrest, halfway inside the Watford half, Harding tucks it backwards for Gonzalo Yara. He leaves it now for Lucy. Lucy turns in a full circle, and now lays it left-hand side for uh, Harding. Abdul lays it off. This is Pat. Pat riddles away from the challenge of court. He's half court. He went on anyway. The referee has uh, blown his whistle. And he's going to have a word with Joel Ekstrand here. Not we're going to see the first yellow card of the night. Yes, we are. Ekstrand goes in the notebook. More of that attacking thought from Jamie Patterson. Get the ball and run at them. Yeah, that was a great feat again from Patterson. One touch. Ekstrand, a big, tall centre-half. Thinks, oh, that one touch, I'll dive in, but a quick flick away from the defender took Batson clean of him until the, the second lunge brought Batson down. So, need to take this one. So, here about 30 yards out, maybe slightly more. It's to the left hand side of the field. Another chance for Andy Reid to curl over a dangerous ball. Nine minutes to go until the break. Forrest one down. Line of bodies edge of the penalty. Area. Three header for Halford is over the crossbar. In the end, by the time he got to the ball, he was about eight yards out, Greg Halford. That is a golden, golden opportunity. Great delivery again from Andy Reid. I'm not sure that the Watford coaching staff will be too impressed with their side's marking because they let Halford go on his own and he couldn't keep his header down from eight yards. It's over and Forrest still trail 1-0. Yeah, that's a little bit of a sitter. Mainly because Halford's all on his own and... Uh, He's run away from the defenders, they, they think they're trying to catch him offside, he's not offside, he's six yards out, and he's got a free header, and obviously expect centre forwards to hit the target. Halford, the standing centre forward, just missed on this occasion, so great delivery again from Andy Reid, and Forrest really should have been 1-1 one -one there. As it is, they continue to trail. Here is Halford trying to get a ball under control and actually giving it to Reid, who gets away for the next round and now finds Patterson. Right corner of the penalty area. Teasing against two, they've doubled up on him and he's still got it. Gives it to Reid again, just outside the box now, Reid. He sends it back to the right-hand side. This is Lee high up in support and feeds it back in field to Andy Reid. Reid things over a low ball and it's cleared away on the volley by Joel Extra. Collins gets to it first on halfway ahead of Troy Deeney, but won't be there to play. We'll throw the Watford. Yeah, he couldn't do any more than that, Collins, and uh, just beat the strike of the ball. But it's bouncing high in the air, and all he has to do is just literally make sure that the one for player doesn't get it, but he's given away a throwing on the half of the line. Match night from BBC Radio Nottingham, also on Five Live Sports Extra tonight. It's Forest Nil, Watford 1. And Watford with a throw halfway inside the Forest half on the far side. They're right. Seven minutes to go. Until half time, Gabriel Angela with the goal for Watford. Throw down the line. They're looking to get uh, Anya in behind Dan Harding here, but Harding is just about strong enough to hold off that challenge. The pair of them have stayed down. I think uh, it is Harding who is uh, a little bit worse off than Ikechi Anya. Uh, shoulder to shoulder, they were leaning on each other, and uh, Dan Harding has stayed down off the field actually. He's behind the byline. As, uh, in the end, he succeeded in shepherding out what was a long throw, trying to get him behind Harding. He succeeded, though, in shepherding the ball out of play, but at what cost? Yeah, it doesn't look too good because Harding's not totally motionless, but he's still stayed lying on his side on the edge of the, off the pitch area, if you like, and clear now has restarted. Well, because he's off the pitch, you know, he's uh, having to go on with, uh, with 10 just at the moment, and now... He really falls heavily in midfield. Referee waves play on, and Watford it is who break down the right hand side. That's the area where Harding should be, of course. But it's Anya who crosses in towards the near post, and Troy Deeney's gone just wide with a volley at the near post. Forrest ripped apart again, although it has to be said it was from an area where their fullback is missing as he gets treatment for injury at the moment. Down the right side, the cross coming in from Anya. 
and volleyed at the near post by Troy Deeney. It didn't miss by much. So, with the side netting, in fact, that shows you how close it was. Forest close to going two down. Yeah, that was a great uh, chance there for Watford to go two up. Thankfully, they didn't. Uh, Deeney just offside with his right foot sh shot on the volley. That's got a great cross to him at the near post. Harding's OK, and he's back in the action now. As Forrest have it inside Watford's half. Good ball from uh, Yara to Reid. Reid floats one forward looking for Halford, headed away by Doyle, and then further cleared by Extra. Little flick from the Kechianya. Now sent forward by Ferrari. What a good ball that is. Picked it from the halfway inside his own half to pick out Forrest the area, edge of the penalty area, and that's a poor ball from him. But Watford pick up the clearance. Pudil has it. Halfway inside Forrest, half wide left. Goes backwards from the Tokyo. And uh, further backwards now for Angelo, the goal scorer. Into the centre circle, he plays it for a Anya, who turns away from the challenge of Yara, buys himself a bit of space, then lays it off for Sean Murray. And Murray lays it off for Angelo once more. Angelo swaps passes with Pudil on that side. Now into the centre circle, he sprays it out for Lloyd Doyle. Four minutes left until half time, just a little bit more than that. And Watford lead it by a goal to nil here at the city ground on BBC Radio Nottingham. And on five live sports extra. This is for Tokyo. Forward towards Forest Fieri. Look at the space he's got. Good way inside the Forest half. It's still going on. Right foot shot deflected by Collins. And away for a corner kick. I can't believe Yara just watched him from a few yards away from him and never made any attempt to go and try and close him down at all. That's an amazing thing. He's actually watching him run towards the Forest goal and literally almost lets him have a free shot. That's very disappointing, at least. And the corner there to Watford. They have moved very dangerous from this. I wonder who's marking Angelo this time. Corner comes in from Anya. This time it's a looping one high into the six-yard box. It's chopped out of the air by Carl Darlo. And as Darlo clears, Angelo has blocked it. And the referee's booked the wrong man, I think. Or maybe he hasn't. He uh, brandished a yellow card in the general direction of Angela and of uh, Ferraudi. It was Angela definitely the block. So we'll, we'll say it's him who got the yellow card. Block the clearance. Uh, Carl Darlow just trying to get... He saw Abdoon right way out on the left-hand side, so tried to kick it as early as he could, but uh, his effort blocked and there's a part in Halford's back, but he doesn't get a free kick this time. Three to go until the break. 1-0. Watford lead, the ball is sent forward long and uh, for Forrest Jamal Abdu is in an offside position, free kick for Watford deep inside their own half and Manuel Almunia is in no hurry at all to walk out of his penalty area and take this, breaks into a little trot now. Here the ice hockey, the Panthers now lead the Cardiff Devils by two goals to one, Jonathan Boxall with the second goal for the Nottingham Panthers tonight and ice hockey's elite with two one, they lead them into the second period in the Welsh capital. Here we are into the last couple of minutes almost of the first half with Forest trailing Watford by a goal to nil. Gabriel Angela, the goal scorer after 33 minutes and Watford come forward again. Neat touch by Forest the area to Deeney. Low ball across the six yard box is cleared away by Eric Lehigh and then Yara sends it further clear and Patterson is chasing after this one but Angela is favourite to get there first and then trains a back pass and clears it left footed into the forest half. Great control by Anya with space and time to do it again and then it's sent forward by Patricio but cut out by Danny Collins. Lucy has it for Forrest. Wiggles away from a couple of challenges. Forward to Halford Street. Lays it off for Lehigh just inside his own half. He sends it long. Up towards Abdu. It's brought down by Abdu. And now Patterson takes it over. And uh, sprays it out to the left-hand side. Midway inside the Watford half. This is Yara. Yara. Raging ball across to the right flank again for Abdu. A couple of yards from the byline. Jamal Abdu. But checking out towards the edge of the penalty area. Now gives it to Lucy. 25 yards out. Back to the right-hand side for Lehigh with room to cross. Lehigh's cross is headed away by Doyley. Not very far. Yara knocks it down to Patterson. Gets it back to Yara. Plays it left side now. This is Harding on the overlapping run. Harding speaks to cross. It's carved away by Almunia. And then further clear by Forrest Vieri. What a ball that is. Uh, but uh, Troy Deeney couldn't control it. Tried to play it first time into the path of Anya. And it goes out for a throw. That was a terrific ball from Forrest Vieri on the clearance. If he meant it, straight to Deeney. But Deeney could do nothing with it. Yeah, there's certainly an ability in this one to try to pass the ball accurately 
Andy even on a, a really wet surface. Space for Andy Reid now, midway inside the Watford half as Forrest look for an equaliser before the break. Last 30 seconds of normal time, end of the first half. Here's Abdu, turning full circle and giving it to Lehigh just a couple of yards away from him. Now Moosey stabs it in field and Reid is caught in possession. But uh, Moosey wins it back again. Good work by Moosey to win it back off Storm Murray. And now back spreads it wide right again. Abdu, 20 yards out, taking on his man, low ball in, four cross, cleared away at the near post easily by Angela. And it'll be a Forest throw. Two minutes for stoppage time to cover the end of this first half. Forest pushing for the leveller. And have it again with Gonzalo Yara. Ten yards inside the Watford half, centre of the field. Gives it to Reid. Good ball. Reid has had a bit of space. Edge of the penalty area. Turns it wide right. Here's Abdu with another chance to cross. Abdu's cross is headed away this time by Joel Extra. Forrest pick up the ball again. Uh, all the way back on halfway. And Lascelles gives it to Collins. Shows how much power there was on the header away from Joel Extra. Here's Yara picking it up. Tries to feed it to uh, Dan Harding. Harding was had his uh, weight on the wrong foot. Was going the wrong way, and so it was uh, played straight out of play by Gonzalo Yara. Yeah, just hustled out of it a little bit on that occasion. We'll still try to do the right thing, pass the ball on as accurately and as quickly as you can. But Watford have kind of raised their game slightly, Colin, I think, since the goal. And the confidence obviously grows with scoring, and that's exactly what's happened to the opposition. Forrest have, have, uh, have done that in patches, haven't they? Well, they stayed by Yara now in the middle of the park, but uh, given away again. On Watford in the shape of Ferraldi straight away. Forrest have it once more. Good ball for Patterson. Out wide right. Space for Lehigh to run into. And he gives it further right wing now. This is Jamal Abdu. Level with the edge of the penalty area. Another cross from him. Halford tries to nod it down, but only nods it down to Matokio. Matokio forward to Dini, who leaves it for Forestieri. Forestieri now gives it to uh, Anya, or tries to. And uh, it was intercepted by Jamal Lascelles. Good defending, but in all honesty, Lascelles also have had no chance because it was a two-on-one break and Dini just couldn't find the catchy Anya. Here's Yara stabbing one forward. Good ball, right hand side. End to end stop, end of this first half. Abdul's driven cross is straight into the midriff of the goalkeeper Albunia. Yeah, that's a real incisive pass there by Yara. Send up doing clear, but again, the cross going straight to the goalkeeper, so a disappointing end so from a really good pass by Yara. Half time here at the City Ground is uh, greeted by uh, a few rumblings of discontent because the home side trails at the break, and that is not something that the home supporters have been used to over recent weeks. Watford lead Gabriel Angela's goal after 33 minutes to catch Yanya's corner from uh, Watford's left hand side was met at the near post by Angela, who with a back heel flick on the volley, which sounds extraordinary, even when you say it, managed to uh, get some real pace on it and fire it just under the crossbar, and beating the man on the line for Forrest as well to give uh, Watford the lead. And they have looked threatening from set pieces on a couple of previous occasions, and on both occasions it was that man, Gabriel Angela, who came close. But he finally broke the deadlock after 33 minutes. Forrest, for their part, have kind of shown flashes of brilliance, and there have been occasions during the half, for maybe three or four minute spells, where they've really put it together and turned it on. The best chances they've had, Danny Collins' diving header, which hit the crossbar after 11 minutes, and then the best of the bunch, nine minutes before half-time, from Andy Reid's free kick, Greg Halford, completely in the clear eight yards out with a free header, managed to plant it over the crossbar. So it's Forrest who trail Watford at the break by a goal to nil. What have you made of the first half, John McGovern? Well, it's a pretty even first half against Watford, and Watford will be the side coming off leading 1-0, thinking, well, yeah, we deserved that, but really Forrest should have had a couple of goals themselves. Collins hit the crossbar with a firm header, just couldn't keep it down, and then Halford's missed one from six yards right in front of goal with no opposition and you would expect him to have at least tested Almunia in the Watford goal. Very slick side Watford, they've got some very talented players, Forrest yet he's got some great feet, Deeney makes some good runs and defensively they don't look too shoddy either so this has been a difficult 45 minutes for Forrest, they've made a few changes, not quite as fluent as we know they can be, especially at home and the conditions not too bad out there considering the amount of rain we've had but with the changes that Forrest have made maybe at times the managers thought well that's not working so he's changed players 
Patterson especially and Abdunuk swap wings. Andy Reid's gone out to play wide for a while, then come back into the middle. So the manager obviously knows it hasn't been that smooth a ride in the first 45 minutes. And you'll just think that he's maybe unlucky to be a goal down because the, the, the goal that was scored by Watford, nice strip and corner at the near post, but a flick that I think is maybe just meant to go in the middle. Uh, well, it could the, have gone anywhere. Anything yeah, could happen. Absolutely anywhere. anywhere, but it's flown past Carl Darlow and I think it was Lascelles trying to keep it off the line but couldn't manage it so you know that's one of those breaks of the ball because there's no way he meant to flick that pass Carlo in the far top corner um, uh, he is a defender actually so there was definitely no um, intention in that but you know Forrest are just going to have to regroup and looking at the, the bench it might be used a lot quicker than maybe the manager normally does with the firepower that's there well, it's not plenty of options there isn't it? he's got strikers in Henderson Mackey you could say uh, doesn't play up front very often for Forrest of course but Tuck Derbyshire, Cox, all on the bench, and the craft of Majeski as well. Well, I don't think there's another side that could boast such an attacking force being left on the bench. Um, so there are plenty of options in that area, but it just depends how he feels. I mean, I, I feel that, you know, in the first half, yes, Watford showed that they can be a real classy side. We know from the match earlier in the season, they've got one or two really talented players with good feet, good vision, and the ability to pass the ball. So, of course, one is one or two problems, but still, if you, if you look at the overall picture for 45 minutes, you know, Collins header that hit the bar could have gone in quite easily, you know, but it's come out. Um Alford should certainly have hit the target, so Forrest themselves might have had a couple of goals. So over the green, I don't know, a little bit of lady luck given Watford a one 0 lead, but you know, Forrest with a slight improvement should get back in this game reasonably quickly. They look a decent side Watford, but they look like a side we would kind of expect them to be challenging the top end of the championship rather than where they are. But well, I think there's a lot of talent there, Colin, and you know, despite having a, a managerial change, you know, they haven't quite found their way, but maybe they're beginning to. Next job, that's John McGovern and the former Forest captain will be back with us for the second half here on match night. And at half time, thanks to the goal from Gabrielle and Gemma, 12 minutes before half time. By luck or by judgment, who knows? But Watford it is. Who have the lead at the city ground at the break. It's Forest nil, Watford one. As the referee Simon Hooper gives a shrill blast of his whistle and gets us going in the second half. Forest it is who kick off and send it down the right hand side for Simon Cox to nod in field, but the ball is beaten half away. Then Cox gets another touch, he comes back to the edge of the box, and it's played in now by Patterson, almost towards Cox again, who's made an immediate impact in the first few seconds. Cleared away by Watford, a forest break once more down the right hand side. Here's Patterson, level with the edge of the Watford penalty area, crossing, headed away by Doyley. Again, Cox was the uh, target. Forrest going to touch with Reid. Watford half with it, but then Lucy wins it back, gives it back to Reid. Reid pings one from 25 yards. How oh, brilliant, Say he's starting away to his left hand side. Comes out again to the cross to come in from Abdul this time. And now Bernier punches clear. Good start for the second half by Forrest. They were coming close to an equaliser. Lascelles forward, but now Watford try and break away. Deeney turning on halfway, down the left hand side. He's got a man outside him. He's watched it in the back off by Eric Lehigh and goes sprawling, does Troy Deeney. Referee wants a word with the American Lehigh. I think it'll just be a word rather than anything else. And it'll be a free kick to Watford, left hand side of the field. And about halfway inside the Forest Park. A curious start for the second half. Albunia already involved in the opening minute of it, saving well from Andy Reid. Now, Forrest with some defending to do. Free kick for Watford, left hand side, and halfway inside the Forest half. Delivered free, header for Angela, 2-0! Totally unmarked! Murray free kick, Angela with the header, and Watford lead it by two goals to nil. Totally and utterly unmarked. The marking was non-existent. And Gabriel Angela has his second goal of the game. And Watford lead it by two goals to nil. Well, Forrest may have looked decent going forward in the first minute of the second half, but defensively in the second minute of the second half, they are an absolute shambles. Nobody moved with Gabriel Angela. Very similar, actually, to the opportunity that Forrest had with Greg Halford in the first half. But where Halford couldn't hit the target, Gabriel Angela certainly did. He buried his header in from about eight yards out, almost from the same blade of grass as Halford missed in the first half. And he has a second goal, and Watford have a second goal, and it's the perfect start from their point of view. 
to the second half. Forest nil, Watford two. And Forest get us underway again, kicking off again. Only two minutes after they kicked off the start of this second half. Here is Yara sending one forward, and it goes all the way through to Manuel Almunia in the uh, Watford goal. He's already had to uh, make one decent save at the start of this second half, but immediately Watford go at the other end and score, and for the second time it's Gabriel Angela, this time with a completely free header. Bringing John McGovern in just a moment to get his thoughts on a shocking start for the second half for Forrest as Angela spreads out a great ball right right for Ferrauni who's running into the penalty area hits the byline squares it back Collins clears at a stretch and uh, now it's uh, uh, Ferrauni again who blocks actually a, a tempted clearance from Jamie Patterson and it bounces out for a Forest throw which is about level with the edge of their own penalty area shocking defending for the goal John McGovern but putting that aside it is a hammer blow to Forest to concede so early in the second half well, it certainly is because you thought the might have even considered making changes themselves. Obviously, Cox has come on, and you think, well, maybe they'll start right on the front foot, but you can see the goal so early. That's tragic, really. I know that they were equal to Watford in the first half, but it's going to be a real uphill struggle being two goals down, obviously, this early in the second half. What a twist and marking for Forrest at the back. And now they have a throw, which Dan Harding is pitching an age overtaking, but he's got nothing to throw at. And in fact, he's found Simon Cox. He chipped it down well and turns out a good ball towards the right hand side. Here's Lehigh, who conceded the free kick that led to the goal. Gives it to Abdoon and gets it back again. There's Lehigh. And now here's Yara finding Lucy in the middle of the Watford half. Lucy turns it left hand side. This is Harding. 25 yards out, crossing, but it's blocked by uh, Forestieri. And Forest will have a throw. 25 yards out on this near side to left. Lucy starts the second half, having a chance to give in the team, so do that as soon as we get a moment. That's Lucy forcing deep back into his own half, and this is Lascelles. Gets it back now from Yara. It's it right hand side for Lehigh. Tucks it back in field for Yara, and that's a good ball. Left hand side. There's an outlet here for Dan Hardy. Scampers forward into Watford territory. Gives it right left now. Level with the edge of the penalty area. This is Patterson. Teasing and uh, trying to turn away from two Watford defenders and managing to get a crossover, but it's over here. And it'll run away on the far side to be just about kept in play by Lehigh. Tucks it back in field first time to Boosie. Then we're inside the Watford half. Squeezes the ball to the right hand side for Abdu. Goes backwards for Lehigh. And Boosie goes all the way back to halfway. And this is Lascelles switching it out to this near side for Collins. Forest nil, Watford 2 on BBC Radio Nottingham Smash that Also on Five Live Sports Extra. As the ball is sent forward by Yara towards Patterson. Cut out though by the experienced figure of Lloyd Doyley. Who clears away for Watford into Forest territory. And Collins will be there first to give it back to Lascelles. Forest with Darlow in goal. Back four of Lehigh, Lascelles, Collins and Harding. Yara and Moosey in the holding roles in midfield. Patterson, Reid and Abdoon. The uh, more attacking three in midfield in a 4-2-3-1 shape with Simon Cox now on a half-time for Greg Halford. The remaining subs, Darius Henderson, Jamie Mackey, Marcus Cudgay, Matt Derbyshire, Randy Maeski and the goalkeeping sub, Doris De Vries. Here is Lucy finding Harding on halfway. Left-hand side of the field. Six minutes gone, second half. Now Patterson lays it off to Lucy again. But Harding outside him once more, still making the overlapping run. Harding tucks it back in field for Lucy. Lucy is level with the edge the box and can be taken off it rather too easily by the Tokyo who gives it to Forestieri and he finds Doyle who's got Jamal Abdu lurking just behind him but manages to clear and Dini is offside as it's then forward. And Dini goes for goal anyway. And uh, saves it, none of it matters. Watford side, Almunia in goal, Doyle, Angela and Ekstrand are the uh, back three for Rowney, Murray, Patokio and Poodle in the next line of four and then Anya playing just behind Dini and Forestieri for Watford, their subs, Jonathan Bond, the goalkeeper, Cassetti, Abdi, Merkel, Bellerin, Hall and Fabrini. Here's Patterson, half more exciting, Watford half left hand side but in an offside position as he receives the ball. Given to Watford. I'm a surprise there on Patterson's face. The lines are signal that he was offside and ran back into an onside position after the ball was played. I didn't see that one myself. 
must have been pretty close. But uh, let's hope that we can get the ball out to Patterson more because certainly in the first half he was the one that could go past members of the opposition in tight positions and Forrest badly need to get themselves a goal back ASAP. 2-0 now to Watford. And we've been playing for eight second half minutes. The second goal came two minutes into the second half. This after uh, Simon Cox had come on at the break. And Forrest in the very first minute it looked really sharp. Cox in the heart of plenty going forwards. And uh, a decent start to the half. Culminated in a very good effort from Andy Reid. Saved by Almunia, but within a minute they were 2-0 down. It's Watford who come forward again. This is for Rowley, the Italian, right-hand side. Goes down under a challenge of uh, Yara, but the referee way to play off. Which he clears, and you can hear the upset amongst the home supporters because it was just hastily knocked forward by the Frenchman, Guy Moussi. And one straight to uh, Watford. Yeah, the problem is he's lost the ball the last three times he's got it, Colin. And, uh, very unforgiving football supporters. He was under a bit of pressure that time, so he didn't have a, a long time to look and pick anybody out. And he just happened to clear the ball, but it went straight to a Watford player, which didn't go down too well with the supporters. Reid tries to clear down the line, but his effort uh, is blocked. Comes back to it, and now he's left it for Danny Collins. Collins, which is short to Harding, deep inside Forrest own half this. Nine minutes into the second half. Collins switches it away to the far side, the right for Lascelles, and he's going to switch it back to the left side for Collins. And Collins gives it to Harding again. Both are quite happy to see Forrest Floyd around there. Now Yara sends one forward, and he's looking for Abdu, who gets a nudge right on the edge of the penalty area from Angela, who's pleading his innocence with referee Simon Hooper. But Forrest gets a free kick, which is a uh, matter of couple of feet or so outside the penalty area, left of centre. Uh, the centre half, which a bit of disintimate in contact with the player column who's running away from goal and uh, we've seen that in the past, you can't do that. You make the guy's running away from goal, just stay goal side, don't make contact. Um, a couple, couple of yards further forward, that would have been a penalty kick, but Andy Reid to take this one. Just to the left of centre and just outside the penalty area. Reed shaping up rather to cross towards the back edge of the box than shoot, but might just be uh, Salt's body language. He's now claiming the wall isn't back the required 10 yards. Jamal Abdul is standing over the ball as well. Right footed, he can curl it from this angle, but it is Reed who moves first before his catch. He does go for goal and sits over by Almunia. They beat the wall and it would have gone in. But for the right hand outstretched of Manuel Almunia giving Forrest just a corner kick rather than a goal back. Reed himself scampers across to take the corner from the right hand side. Left footed, in swinging corner from Andy Reid, aimed at Collins. He gets his head to it, it loops up in the air and he's plucked out of that air very comfortably indeed by Almunia who bowls it out quickly and Watford get moving again but now given away, intercepted by Lehigh on halfway and Lucy gives it back to Lehigh down the right hand side Patterson tries to turn, can't do so and now Watford try to go on the counter attack again down the left hand side, this is Anya in possession midway inside the forest half, rolls it infield to Deeney Deeney keeps moving it right hand side and it's not good touch from Fernando Forestieri he's lost out to Harding and he clears with a good ball down the line for Abdu. Abdu now finds Patterson. Patterson 10 yards inside his own half, drifting across to this near side the left, rolling it back into the centre circle. Good first time ball from Yara, and then an excellent ball from Reed out to the right hand side. Reed goes on the run forward to try and get on the end of the return ball from Lehigh, but cut out once more by Angela. He's given it away though, straight to Lehigh. Lehigh 30 yards out. Now Reed has it. Reed uh, tries to play it to the left hand side. And it's cut out by Forestieri. I don't know if he was looking for Patterson or for Hardy. But it's cut out by Forestieri and out for a throw on the far side. Forest take. Back towards halfway. And this is uh, Jamal Lascelles. And now Yara swaps passes with Reed. He's getting more and more influential in the game, Andy Reed, as he tries to plop the way back for Forest. Now Abdoon has it. Left hand side. 25 yards out. Gives it to Harding. Close by him. Back to Abdu. Watford with plenty back. And Forrest forced away from the penalty area once more. Yara gives it to Moose, who's in between two players and has to dig out a ball to Harding, who then not makes for Rowney. 
And now I do because he cracks the Boosie. Boosie is 30 yards out, thinking about a shot. Instead, lays it off for Lehigh. Pushes the ball back in field. There's Lehigh for Reed. Reed with a good ball. Left hand side of the field. This is Patterson. Patterson left wing. Taking on his men again. Rolls it out to Abdulis. Uh, in support. Now back to Yara. 25 yards out. Yara trips over across. Boosie back. Goal, but the team itself, everything is when they get the ball now is to go forward. 
more laborious in the first 45 minutes, but certainly the goal flips at the players as much as the crowd. Yara picks out 
Luffy is well forward in a right wing position at the moment. Gives it back to Lehigh. Lehigh's crossing for the penalty area. He was chested it down by Cox. There are enough bodies to at least temporarily crowd him out. But Lucy has it again wide right. He gives it to Reed. Reed is just outside the penalty area. Halfway through the second half. A forest trailing 2 1. Henderson being made ready to come on as a substitute as Harding lays it down the left hand side. This is Abdoon. Abdoon goes backwards for Collins. Collins now rolls it into the edge of the centre circle. This is Yara turning away from a couple of challenges, trying to spread one through, and Cox can't control it edge of the box. It just dribbled away from him. Or was perhaps deflected away from him and spun away from him. And it goes through to Manuel Almunia. 2 1 Watford continue to lead it. He continues to lead, but it's for us that have been on the front foot ever since the goal by Cox went in 12 minutes into the second half. Two nil down at the time, but they've remained on the front foot ever since. and is a rare Watford attack. He's uh, he was arguing with the uh, assistant referee who was right next to it, and that is going to be Jamal Adin's last action of the uh, match because he's been replaced by Darius Henderson. Two fakes away. Henderson comes on. Forrest go with two off front. Henderson and Cox now off front. Reed goes wide left. Patterson goes uh, wide right. Lucy and Yara left in the middle of the park. It's 4 4 2, John McGovern. Well, two strikers is always better than one, so a shrewd move. He brought on Cox, obviously. Um, He's brought on Henderson now, so that's that's real intent to, to go for this equaliser. Got two. Two one down at home at the moment. Uh, Yeovil to come on Sunday afternoon here at the City Ground at the run of home games. Moving that top side against Preston last week as Preston here walks down next round. That'll be a free kick for Watford by their own byline and Almunia, no doubt, will take a little while over taking this latest free kick deep inside his own half of the field. So we're just getting some instructions on to Christian Patrocio, player on your old Argentinian, as Almunia clears and Collins wins a good header against Troy Deeney, brought down by Cox on halfway and turns it backwards on Lehigh. Lehigh. Collins inside his own half. What to want to make a change fairly soon. As Yara and Reed try and work something left hand side. It's so, broken up by Ekstrand, who plays it forward towards Troy Deeney once more. Lays it off into mid field. And he's going to be outside. Yes, Miles. That goes up. It took a little while for the flag to go up. Was the assistant referee swapped hands? And it was what? Swapped the flag from one hand to the other. But he was miles off. Yeah, he was absolutely miles off. Forrest again looking to get this ball forward as quickly as possible, but Watford not too shy about getting back either in numbers when they're threatened. The quicker break in and once they've lost the ball, they're back in numbers to make it difficult for Forrest. Well, they've been strong away from home, have Watford. As they were beaten at Manchester City a weekend in the cup, despite being 2 0 up, this long ball forward is straight through to Manuel Almunia. But in terms of league football, they haven't been beaten in seven league matches away from home. But the last six have all been draws. Extraordinary run for Watson. Before that, they won a game, and before that, they lost a game. But six draws in a row away from home in the league. So uh, clearly they're a fairly difficult side to break down. They've got themselves 2-1 ahead here and they have the ball halfway outside the forest half. Far side to left, this is Anya taking on Lehigh and crossing and easily cleared away at the near post by Lascelles. Brought down by Lucy, who's under pressure from Anya but manages to smuggle the ball clear. And Reed then straight down a good first side ball to Harding. He kicks his head down and makes tracks to halfway. Swaps just inside the Watford half. Swaps passes with Yara, who's encouraging him to get forward and again, Tokyo gets back with him and gets the challenge in, but Forrest going to throw, level with the edge of the Watford penalty area. And Forrest getting ready to make another change as they cross something back home.
the ball, he slipped away to cross by Andy Reid with the outside of his left foot diagonally to find the Forest substitute. Left foot, looks up, sees Henderson, picks him out, but Henderson's still going to put his head there. One of the Watford defenders has actually tried to kick the ball away. Henderson's got to his head, Almuni has come out to him, but it's gone through his legs to bring Forest back on level terms. Superb Andy Reid and fans reckon that they can go on and win this game and there's really no reason why they couldn't to be honest uh, the way they have uh, set about Watford since well, really those second half changes I know they were rocked back by that second goal early in the second half for Watford but the uh, changes up front have certainly made the difference for Forrest that's the fact that Andy Reid has become more and more influential on the game well that, that cross collar was absolutely superb I'm actually behind it here, and you can, you can see Andy Reid look up and see Henderson, and then to pick him up with such accuracy, was absolutely superb with the outside of his left foot. Morris having it again, they're coming forward with Patterson, and Patterson makes it forward towards Henderson, now moving around just outside his penalty area, and clearing away from the Forest striker, and really looks as if he might have hurt himself, he's just uh, put his arm up towards the bench. equalising goal and Marco Cassetti has come on and Ferrani has pushed forward to the uh, right hand side of midfield as uh, Forrest playing back towards halfway and beyond and into their own half of the field so a little bit of rest like for Watford but uh, Forrest begun the second half on the front foot keeping it going Coming forward again, this is Patterson. Patterson left foot is crossing towards the back post. It'll come outside the penalty area for Harding. So actually in a low ball, which is touched by Henderson and Roy of the target. Harding actually almost kept the, uh, the ball in play and prevented from his driving run forward down the left hand side, keeping him going. He's almost really able to keep the effort from Henderson from going out for a goal kick. And that wasn't to be the case. So now we're going to have a stoppage because, as uh, the thought, after his uh, last action, clearing the ball hurriedly away from outside his box. Manuel Almunia is uh, struggling with injury. The Watford physio has gone off. Uh, they've only made two changes so far, so we could still bring Jonathan Bond on if necessary. But certainly when Almunia put his hand up straight away, he sensed that he might realise he had a problem. Yeah, he had to really stretch to get to that one. Henderson was chasing it down. I don't think there was any real contact from Henderson. It was just an awkward stretch by Almunia to get the ball clear. But got him this injury but uh, yeah. no sympathy from the Forest fans they want the game to continue they've just got back on level terms with you know, quite an, ex an exciting Watford side in some ways because when, when they break they look really dangerous but they've been literally pummeled by Forest at the start of the second half and you could, you could say Forest certainly deserved to be back on level terms after being unfortunate to go into half time 1-0 down we're working out the, uh, the Watford substitution, which, as I say, happened while Forrest were uh, celebrating their equalising goal. It's Alman Abdi who's gone off, the, uh, the player who had only just come on. He thought he'd uh, hurt himself on one of those surging runs forward. He didn't last too many minutes. Higby's uh, gone off. And he's been replaced by uh, Marco Cassetti. Ferrari has pushed forward into midfield with Cassetti coming on on the right-hand side defensively for Watford. They have a free kick on the far side of the field. There are 13 minutes to go on match night from BBC Radio Nottingham. Tonight's off Hard Life Sports Extra as well. And it's 2-2 at the City Ground, but Watford are coming forward. And the effort is to have a volley from Kudil coming well forward. And it's way over the crossbar from an angle. Never really looked anywhere near endangering Carl Barlow. Yeah, but I don't know where Lehigh was in that situation, Colin, because it's been chipped forward into front of right back position. Patterson to the closest one, trying to get there to close him down as he fires over the crossbar. Lehigh was nowhere near his position, so Forrest maybe getting carried away a little bit by trying to get everybody forward, but they've got to just remain tight when they've lost the ball. Six, two it is. The ball is back with Albunia, who seems okay. So much so, in fact, that Watford have poised to make their third 
substitution, but it's another outfield player who is uh, who's going to come on. We're going to uh, bring on Diego Fabrini very soon. As uh, Lucy tries to clear and is charged out, but then Lehigh does clear out of his own half. Just he's down with a pills for half ball from the fans by uh, Gabriel Angela. Referee waves play on. Angela scored both of the Watford goals, but uh, Simon Cox and Darius Henderson both substitute for Forrest have got the Reds back into it. Two of these it is, and 12 minutes to go at the city ground. This is Reed sending it forward for Henderson, who lays it off for Simon Cox midway inside the Watford half. Uh, now Reed again finds Yara. Yara forward to Henderson again, who controls. It's uh, knocked away from him by Ekstrand. And then Watford try and build through midfield. Anya exchanging passes with Ferrari, but not challenged by Boosie. And uh, Harding comes across halfway. Just ahead, he's lifted by this four. Goes straight to the Tokyo, and now Watford looks to spring on. Here's Anya, jumping up towards the edge of the Forest penalty area. As Forest back off him, Anya rolls it infield now towards the Tokyo. The Tokyo onto his right foot, pulled himself a bit of space. There's that touch around the post by Darlow. I thought it was, but the referee has given a goal kick. Riding away to his right. I'm pretty sure that Carl Darlow got fingertips for that to turn it away, and that's what many of the Watford players are seeming to suggest at the moment too. Simon Hooper, Marco Cassetti too strongly because he's been booked for it. And uh, now here comes the change, and Diego Fabrini is going to be brought on by Watford, and he's going to replace Kechi Anya, and Forrest are going to bring on Jamie Mackey as well. And he is going to replace the game. The Bucks have getting a really good round of applause at uh, some of this quick speak in the first half. On the first two short things for Forrest. Still made me feel a bit hard done by to be taken off, but he's had a good run of late and uh, back his fresh legs, so maybe his extra little bit of strength or power might count. Gets extra to win the header. 15 yards inside his own half against Darius Henderson. But Forrest pick up the second ball. Ten minutes to go here at the sitting ground. It is 2 2 between Forrest and Watford. As uh, Lloyd Doyley heads away, but the ball is picked up by Mackie. He's way inside the Watford half. Lays it off for Reed. Reed tries to pull it to Yara inside the middle of the Watford half and he turns his right hand side now for Lehigh. Lehigh. Little ball inside right channel. This is Mackie trying to turn inside the box and Alcunia slides on it away to his left. He was detected by a challenge anyway. Took the sting off it and Alcunia pulls it out short and this is uh, the Tokyo coming forward across halfway for Watford. Nutmegs Andy Reid, the ball to his right, but gives it away. The side of Cox, who gives it back to Reid. So it's a lovely reverse ball back into the path of Cox. Cox couldn't get it under control, though an extra hand smashes it away from him with a sliding challenge. Great ball again from Reid. Forrest still have it, wide right. This is Mackey. Mackey attacking the corner of the penalty area. Low ball in. It's just snapped away at the near post, but Reid sinks over across the field. Quite a 
a long way out, he hit it low along the ground, and I'm pretty sure that Diego Fabrini diverted that towards goal, but why? Corner's given anyway. Then it comes towards the uh, 12 yard spot, and uh, Watford body to a falling like flies inside the box, and Forrest have got it clear. On the halfway, finds the Tokyo, chips it forward once again. Lascelles and Lucy both go off, Forrest did it clear, not very far. Here come Watford again, left hand side, cross comes in, Lascelles heads away. And Watford will have a throw on that far side of the field, their left, level with the edge of the Forest box. Seven to go, it has been a thriller of a second half. Well, it's been an incredible second half. I think Forrest unfortunate to be 1 0 down at half time, then they concede early in the second half. And you think, well, this is going to be a real tough fight, but they've rolled their sleeves up, uh, they've put their lot in, and they've got themselves back in the league. What's the proof, John? What quality? Well, we've kind of said all season, Colin, but, you know, they've got this little extra bit of character this season. The number of times they've come from, from being goals down has been significant, and uh, they've shown it again once more tonight. What could it have it? An extra. Set forward down the right hand side. It is Cassetti for Watford. Level with the end of Forest Box. It's across. It's blocked by Dan Harding and it'll go out of play. It'll throw to Watford. And uh, Cassetti is uh, going to take it for Verona and Roverman. Throws down the line. Here's Fabrini trying to tilt near the byline. Collins gets the challenge in at the expense of a corner. So Watford, six minutes to go, slightly less than that, plus stoppage time here at the city ground. Forest three now, Watford two. Two goals for Gabriel Angelo, but then the Forest comeback. Murray takes the corner. <laughs> now Murray towards the near post, and then Danny Collins has pushed away from the near post area. And uh, goes out for a throw to Watford. Down the right hand side, what's for? Cassetti is the man who's going to take. Throws it into Fabrini. Good challenge by Reed. Thought he'd won the throw as well, but the assistant referee disagreed. Another throw. Cassetti takes down the byline. And, uh, Reed it is from Smith. He's challenged as he's clearing it. Jubil then gets a shot from the top of the tee, and that's blocked by Eric Lehigh's challenge. He goes out for a throw on the far side of the field. Watford's left. Ten yards inside the forest half. Now Watford's turn to try and push for an equalising goal as Forrest have got their noses in front. Vini has it. Into the penalty area now left wing Watford's playing and it's challenged by Keith Lucy but again the referee is right on the spot this time and while Watford thought that he's got a corner off Lucy it's the goal kick that's been given. Yeah, this has been a strange match for Lucy. He's got a little bit of stick from the supporters but Lead on the goal for Cox, and then a great saving tackle there has restored the faith in him from the Forest supporters. It's nice to see that. He's, he's an honest guy, Moosey. That's the one thing you'll say about him. He keeps going. He's kept going just as every other Forest player has, even when there were goals down. And then again, he's putting the ball and getting Forest back possession. Forest three, what for two? And we have four minutes left at the city ground plus stoppage time. As Forrest do have it inside Watford territory. Bussy uh, plays a rather loose pass and straight to Cassetti. What were you just saying? No, do it. Oh, he's giving it straight back to Bussy. Yeah, yeah, he's got a tap here. This time lays it off for Reid on halfway. Reid picks one forward. Chested down by Henderson. Now Mackie has it. No, he doesn't. Just dwells on it for a second. And he's not put it right to the top in the shape of Mancella, who is uh, not very well forward. But now the ball is going back again. Inside right her own half. Yara swapping passes with Lascelles. He's got a bit of pressure from Deeney. Now Reid lays it off towards the right hand side, and this is Lehigh. Three to go. Forest three to up. Yeovil to come on Sunday, remember, three o'clock kickoff. And the match day with you from half past two on Sunday afternoon. Ball is played forward by Harding. Good ball. Cox chasing after it, left wing. Extra and gets across the cover on Andy Spell by Cox. That'll be the uh, free kick to Watford back by their own byline. Uh, it's as good a ball as Harding could have played down the line for Cox, but on the slippy surface it just broad away from him as he was chasing it and uh, just end up fouling the Watford player. But uh, he's close to file back so everybody's back in the defensive position. In a way, 
to Albunia from left to right. It's over the head of Lucy Athene, cleared away by Lassell, solid challenge. But Tokyo scoops it up in the air once more, Digny battling for it again, so too Fabrini. Now Angelo, who's been pushed further forward. And it's cleared by Forrest, only as far as the Tokyo in the middle of the red car. He chips it down the left-hand side. Fabrini controls, but he's shown the door by Eric Lehigh. And Lehigh always fouled it again, says the referee, free kick, Watford. Left wing position, about 12 yards from the byline and three or four yards outside the uh, penalty area. Watford's left wing, Forrest White side defensively. Green is given the man of the match award. Absolutely right. So Forrest leading 3 2, but defending to do here from this left wing free kick for Watford. Right underneath it. Don't get points to take that. Okay, well, that's a bonus. Total this kick there. Uh, this delivery's been pretty good at times, but uh, that's a horror. A real horror of an attempt there by next strand, was it, that put that one on Sean Murray, I think. Oh, Murray, was it? Yeah. He was just trying to get some stick on it or something, you know. Just let the ball rock. Total of this kick. Just a minute to go. Cross stoppage time here at the city ground. Billy Davis out of the edge of his technical area. Tackling some instructions off. With his body language just trying to raise the side for one last effort here as Forrest leading by three goals to two. Henderson battling with x -Brand. Henderson's big next round is the challenge. And Henderson's won the free kick. And Reed is going to take it. Heavy off inside the Watford half to the left of centre. This time for once. Forrest are not in a hurry to get plenty of bodies forward up towards the edge of the penalty area. All the defenders have stayed back as they lead 3-2. Reid curls over the free kick, headed away at the edge of the box, and then Murray clips it forward towards Fabrini. He's given it away. Yara threads one through for Henderson on site. Henderson plays. Oh! Corner. Reed 
jogs across the table. <laughs> There's one thing gone on, you know, the substitutes. What a difference they've made. If you take Mackey and you take Henderson and you take Cox, the ball ball goes between them. Yeah. And obviously the contribution. Henderson, you know, has really unsettled the Watford defence since he's gone on physically and uh, that's been another factor as to why Forrest have got themselves well into the lead. Take a short corner, really to Mackey. Mackey holds on to it under pressure from two the uh, defenders. And they're going to be a goal kick, but there are only two minutes of stoppage time remaining. I should tell you that uh, the uh, aftermath of Forrest's goal celebration, which perhaps went on a little bit too long for the referee, Simon Hooper's lighting Simon Cox from a booking. Laid off by Ferraudi, good run forward by uh, Doyle, he comes back to Ferraudi, he's quite the penalty area and his shot is very tame, side foot straight to Carlo. Uh, gets through rather easily once again, uh, just a little pass, was actually helped on by Doyle, and he shot at the near post, but uh, Carlo as usual, perfect position there, just to pick up the hook. Top by Cox towards Henderson, who tries to head it back towards Simon Cox, but next strand is in the way. Sends a long ball forward, aimed at Deeney, headed away by Lascelles, brought down by Reid. And Reid got such a package of Yara. And now Reid looks back and takes Cox in all sorts of space left hand side. Towards the edge of the penalty area, Simon Cox on a hat trick, dribbles it inside, and Albania touches it over the crossbar. Great hit by Simon Cox, right for it to the edge of the penalty area. Forrest have themselves another corner kick. Simon Cox almost had himself a second half hat trick as a substitute. Albania saves, and it remains 4 2 to Forrest. Yeah, there wasn't a great deal of effort to close Cox down as he kicked in from the left hand side of the Watford penalty area. Outside of his right foot, went past one, went past two, hit it with all the power he could. But fortunately for Almunia, it was close enough for him to touch over the bar. Fifth minute of stoppage time, and the corner taken short by Forrest, and Henderson now lays it back all the way along the right touchline for Lehigh back near the halfway line as Forrest try to play keep ball to see out these final few seconds. But that's a great ball from Henderson to Boosie, and Boosie now has found Harding in space down the left hand side, midway inside the Watford half. Harding delivers the cross, back close to the I think he was trying for goal. He's actually ended up putting it across the six-yard box, and Watford are able to clear it. Lucy trying to win it back left wing. Watford have enough bodies to get the ball clear, and Fabrini has an outlet down the left side side. And here's Judo just inside the Forest half. So we play now five and a half minutes of stoppage time. Still no sign of a final whistle yet from the referee Simon Hooper. Forest lead it by four goals to two. But Tokyo sends it left side. There is the whistle. What a comeback from Forest. Who are now 12 games on the and in the second half show that they can be a real force to be reckoned with in the championship this season. Two nil down early in the second half and the two goals from Gabriel Angela who are from the pitch in the first half. But the second half a different kettle of fish entirely. A half time change six Simon Cox come on with a Greg Halford and all scores 13 minutes into the second half to reduce the arrears to 2-1. On 69 minutes from Andy Reid's cross and a back row centre the Neville Diggs at 2-2 on 79 minutes Jamie Mackie comes off the bench and it only takes him 2 minutes to head in a cross from Andy Reid to put Forrest 3-2 ahead and then on 90 minutes Simon Cox gets his second and smashes in Forrest's fourth goal to win 4-2 four, four goals for substitutes four second half goals and Forrest from 2-0 down win the game by four goals to two and that 45 minutes John McGovern is a fine example of how to continue and maintain a challenge at the top of the championship. Yeah, sides that have got a little bit of character and sides that have got a lot of belief to come back from being goals down and Nottingham Forest in the second half of this match against Watford when they went 2-0 down early in the second half showed every bit of character and belief that you could imagine a side would have. They scored four goals in reply to Watford's two and made it a real convincing win and following that up with another game against Yeovil on Sunday this could be a very fruitful week for Nottingham Forest.